There's no doubt in today's society, people are struggling with roles, with ideas of what they should be doing. And we've asked a, a guest to come by today because of a brand new book that he has written to kind of give some direction, especially for one group of people, and that is uh, men. Our guest today is Gerald Bauer. And Gerald has written a new book uh, uh, called Manufactured Manhood. Manufactured Manhood. It's in the past tense. What's being manufactured with men today, Gerald? A secular way of living, not following the plan of God. And we live in a society where sin is free, it's attractive, and we choose to not be responsible. Hmm. A lot of us, not all men, but a lot of us have fallen into that mindset of self-gratification, instant gratification, and what's in it for me? That's what it's all about. And um, I was sharing with you earlier, I I have a, I'm in my church, we have a men's connect group. And I've learned when you're dealing with us, we have a strong affinity against the C word, commitment. And when I, when I've done sessions with women, I hear it all the time. If I can just find a man that keeps his word, that'll make me happy. And we have to be committed. A man will make a commitment and then forget about it or not follow up on it. And I've challenged men on that. You, If you're going to make a commitment to anyone, you have to follow up on it. Because a lot of how our kids see us is by the commitments we make. Hmm. And as a dad, that's something I can't do. I have to make the commitment and keep it. Even if you don't, you still need to give an explanation why, not just go away and like it never happened. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't feel like it or something of that sort. So uh, manufactured manhood, what's your goal in this little book? To help men, let me put it this way, to educate men into God's design, to enlighten women on what they can do to help him get to that design, and to live in an environment for kids that they feel the protection of their godly father. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, hard right now when society is so fractured. Uh, yes. There are not many um, families that are the same unit uh, as was started. Uh, some single parents, some uh, maybe reconstituted families. Uh, it, we're in a real upheaval right now. Yes, we are. And is that uh, the reason why you wanted to write the book? Or? That's one of the many reasons, because family is important to me. Well, let's, let's, let's go to the beginning. Family is important to God. Hmm. He created family. We are supposed to be a microcosm of what goes on in heaven. And when we do not do that and the fracture comes in, you know, the Bible talks about the, the enemy wants to get a stronghold, but first he has to get a toehold, then a foothold, so he can overpower the man. Well, this book is about teaching men how to not be overpowered. And that, that leads to the point that once I stand in my doorway, the enemy cannot get in. Because God said he can't get in if I follow Christ. Okay. And are men standing in the doorway anymore? Or some aren't, some are. I guess we can't yes. just uh, paint a broad brush. Right. How do I change? If I feel that, boy, I, you know, I may not be connecting the way I should be in my family, a um, little frustration. I mean, men have to be careful because sometimes when you get too frustrated, you just give up. You say, I'm not going to do anything. A part of what we've taught in some of the, the groups I've done, the two biggest things that fracture a relationship, a.k.a. family, a lack of communication and financial issues. If we ever learn, if I'm struggling with something, then I need to sit down and talk talk about it, not just ignore it or another term, stuff that feeling and become emotionally detached from my wife or from my kids or whatever the case may be. But isn't the father figure in the home supposed to be the leader? I mean, why I'm not supposed to communicate to them some of the issues that are that I'm struggling with. If I want to have a family that's, that's strong, my kids need to know I'm not perfect. There's nothing perfect about me. Hmm. I was talking to my daughter last week, and she said that her and her younger sister were so sick and tired of me and Mama dragging them in the room when they were 10 years old to do Bible study. But now, when you talk to those young ladies, that's the end result. Mm -hmm. God came in. It was my responsibility to lead the, lead the spiritual godless in that family. And my wife was right there with me. And we did that. And they were 10, 11 years old, up to the probably 15 or 16. And it was kicking and screaming to hear my daughter tell it. Yeah. 
<laughs> She's a godly woman now. So that's one ingredient is be a, a spiritual leader in your home. Is mm-hmm. that part of, uh, and I guess you would say to remanufacture manhood? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to be a spiritual leader. God gave that assignment to us. Um, I heard old preacher tell us one of the reasons women like the preacher because he put in her to hear the word of God from a man. And if she's not hearing it from her husband, she's going to be attracted, not that kind of attractive, but to the, to the pastor because he's given the word of God. So if I become the pastor of my house, which is what I'm supposed to be, my consultation will be to hear the pastor, learn from him, and then share that with my family, hmm. not depend on the pastor to teach my wife and kids how to be godly. I, that's my responsibility. Okay, and that's the detachment. Uh, that means I have to attend the church. I have to listen. I yeah, have to not drive them, drop them off. <laughs> yeah. I, need, I need to walk in, too. That's right. Okay. Uh, we're talking with Gerald Bauer on KHCB, and Gerald is a Christian counselor, a licensed professional counselor, and uh, just has published a book uh, through uh, Westbow Press. I think they have a website, westbowpress.com. You can get the book through them or some of the other Internet uh, sources now that are available. Gerald Bauer, a book's called Manufactured Manhood. And uh, his goal is to use this, you know, in a variety of ways. First of all, you're hoping that a, a person, a man, would sit down and read through this and understand where he is. But also, I know and you mentioned that sometimes you can use this as a, a study guide or a help. Uh, you call it a connect group. What, what is a men's connect group? I don't know that men connect, do they? <laughs> it's like women connect, but men just kind of. And that's a, you're exactly right, Bruce. It's, in my case, it's a group of us we meet once a month. And we are, we are, you have to do this with men. You feed them first. <laughs> okay. So we we'll eat first. We you know we have prayer. We we'll eat, and then I pull them into the other room, and we will just do whatever issues are going on with you as a man. What are you struggling with in the kingdom of God? And we will just talk about that. Or I do a lesson. It depends on how my how I'm guided that day on on where the mindset of the men are when they come to the group. Hmm. You know, men today are, and, and everyone is facing with the, the, the job situation, the uncertainty, mm-hmm. uh, maybe the extra pressure now that uh, we have to work long hours because uh, we're fearful that if we don't, uh, we'll be the, the first name that comes up mm-hmm. if there's any kind of uh, change at the company. Uh, so how do we, you know, th- that's a pressure. You want to support your family. You want to provide for them. But on the other hand, we need to keep pr- priorities straight. So uh, there's a lot of pressure. What I do in that situation because I've been there before. I make sure I up my level of family time when I'm not working. I, I know you're tired. I've I've done those 12, 15, 16 hour jobs, and then I got to a point my family had priority, and I'm gonna pray and I ask God to protect me while I make this decision. I, I've made some decisions that my family has priority. Sure, we all want to make money, we all need money, and I'm not saying that's not important, but the family is priority. And I had an opportunity to be in the kind of position that I was able to do that. And, you know, my family understood that. So. How do you develop a, a grid to evaluate where you are in your family? Uh, you know, how do you know that you're doing what, and the book helps you with that grid, so you can use some of those illustrations. But how does one decide that they're walking the path that God has rather than what the world has set up? Man, are you ready for this one? Ask your wife. And just be prepared to get a response, and you be prepared to understand what she is. Hmm. You're not going to know until you ask her. And I know some guys are shivering now. If I ask her, she might tell me I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Well, that's good. So now I need to know I know what I need to do now. Um, that's a hard decision. I, I asked my wife one day, and she told me, and that gave me room for improvement. And a lot of times, um, I don't want to hear it. You know, as that ma- masculine ego stuff, I don't want to hear it, but I need to know. Give me a report card. Where am I as your husband, as the father? And then I do the work depending on what, you know, what she gives me. And that's that's kind of, we have to take a chance, fellas. If if I really want this to work as a man, I need to ask some questions. I just met last Saturday. I have an accountability group for my old church. It's seven of us, and we meet and it's like a surgeon. We just cut each other open and talk about where we are in life, where we are as, as man, as husband, as father. And those guys are really challenged. So I'm always open for opportunity to learn how I can improve myself. And so we met last week. We had lunch. at We sat down at 2 o'clock, and when we finished, it was 7.15. We had a lot to talk about. 
Mm. And that's that's what you do, fellas. If you really want to do this and you're really serious about being that godly man, ask your wife, get you some accountability men in your life. It's kind of like a support system. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of the three or four things. Uh, and I guess if you're listening right now, maybe the, the, the place to start is at your church. Yes. And to develop a, a group of uh, men that can be willing to, to talk and find out where you are. And, and that's, You know, men are not vulnerable easily. Right. Exactly. So how to, how to, that, that's that's how to, something you, I see a lot. And of. maybe that's the manufactured, uh, the world manufactures yes. that saying, no, no, you need to put up a wall. You need to, to, to keep um, silent about things like that. So how do you purge through that? You have to keep working with them. Um, one of the issues that, that I have to deal with on a regular basis is listen to women tell me that he won't talk to me. He feels like if he shares anything, that makes him weak. It's just the opposite. It makes you stronger. But we have to get past that male macho nonsense and understand your lady wants to know what you can do to be a better man, a better husband, better father, whatever the situation may be. Hmm. But we have to be vulnerable. We have to take that chance. It's a risk. It's a risk. We have to take the risk and ask, what can I do to become a better man? And it starts first, of course, with a relationship with uh Christ or with the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, with God the Father, but then uh, moving towards uh, implementing that which you hear and mm-hmm. uh, getting guidance, direction from your pastor or whatever, or from this book called Manufactured Manhood, Beating the Odds Against Destructive Masculine Development. Obviously, the world, we can just see it from a, you know, not stepping too far away. Obviously, what the world is suggesting about the role of men today mm-hmm. is leading us uh, astray from what exactly the, walls, uh, the, exactly. the Word of God says. Uh, so, um, and the fact that we're going to be in the minority, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are. And we have to really always go back to the, to the Word of God. There's, I've got more insight, newer, pure insight in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 now as far as Adam is concerned. There's a lesson that I did with a, with a church group a couple of weeks ago, and they just kind of looked at me. Like, where did you come from with that? But God's given me a lot of insight. I, mm-hmm. Each time I look at Adam, I see something different that we need to do. Um, that tree, that tree situation, we keep focused on the tree of good and evil, but we forget the tree of life was there. He never focused on that. He was too busy, as John, Second John 2, 15 and 16 talks about, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. We have to be careful of that. So that's why God had to block the garden. We can't let him get to the tree of life once he committed sin. Mm-hmm. But it was always there. Forever lost in eternity. Exactly. Mm-hmm. By God's grace. And that's another uh, interview which we can't get to today. But if you'd like more information or like to contact uh, Gerald, he does have an email. Uh, Jobna, J-O-B-N-A-H, Jonah with a B, Jobna at hotmail.com. And the book is called Manufactured Manhood. It's available through westbowpress.com or any other uh, bookstore. That's the publisher, Westbow Press. Manufactured Manhood. Great uh, resource to encourage men to live their lives according to what the Lord has in his word. Gerald, always a joy to have you here. Thanks for taking time. Thank you. You're tuned to Christian Radio, keeping him close by the KHCB Network.